There are some essential tools that every electrician can't live without, and I've got mine right here. I'm going to show you what I carry in my tool bag every day and the upgrades I've made since making a similar video this time last year. So let's dive right in. Probably the biggest change I've made since last year is the bag itself. I no longer use this bag, mainly because it's a little bit big, it starts to look a bit tatty around the edges, not that that really matters too much, but because it's got wheels on it, the one thing I did find with it is just that I just kept overloading it and I was making it too heavy to the point that I could barely carry it. Also, a couple of times, because I'm using it on the wheels, I did bring a bit of dirt into a couple of properties a couple of times, which obviously I did clean up, but it's just one of the one less thing to have to worry about. So it's out with the old and in with the newer, which is this one. So this one, obviously slightly smaller than the other one. There's no wheels on it, but because it is part of the pack out system, it does interlock with its feet into their system. Now, I don't actually earn any Milwaukee tools, but I do have a lot of their toolboxes, which does allow me to clip all this all, all on, and when I'm on a site, I've got much bigger, chunkier wheels on the main trolley, so I just put it all together and I can take it with me. But having a smaller bag doesn't mean I've had to economize. I've had to change a few things, but all for the better, I think. So on the front pocket here, I have all my main hand tools. I still got some needle, needle nose pliers, my bendy bent nose pliers. Now these are probably my mostly, the tool I use the most. Um, just, I just love them, they're very handy. They're like having a small child's hand that can get into corners or back boxes and cabling that these chunky fingers just can't do. I have two pairs of, well, three pairs of snips, in fact. I have my spring-loaded snips, which don't really spring-load anymore because they're quite old and they need a bit of an oil, but um, they're good for heavy-duty cabling. I recently acquired the CK snips. Now, these are good because they've got cutouts in the blade already for 1.5 and 2.5 mil cable so it just makes stripping the insulation off of twin and earth cable a little bit simpler and a little bit quicker. With that as well I have a Nipex pair again very similar holes on there this one does 0.7 to 1.5 and 2.5 so again the same. There's a very large pair of jaws on there for snipping cable. Now these are excellent for cutting meter tails. Um, I also find them because they've got that curved edge to it, if you're careful with it, they're really, really good for putting on some flexible cable. You can twist them around a little bit and they just pull straight off. Really, really, really glad I bought these. A Couple of different pairs of wire strippers again. Um, for different situations. The, the ideal ones, they're great for getting into back boxes because you've got the cable coming out. I can get this straight in there, clip on the cable, strip it off, pull it out. And these ones, side loading, again, very, very good, but these are more heavy duty. They've also got cable crimps in there. And this little bit in here is great for cutting the screws for accessories. Moving on, I've got my very heavy duty snips. Now these ones I, used for more heavy duty stuff like meter tails, something like 25 mil. Um, not used so much these days because now I've got the Nipex, so these may be going into retirement fairly soon. Backup pencil, can't go wrong with a pencil. A pair of scissors, and more importantly, I got my label makers. I'll say label makers, my label markers, which are these fantastic marksman's chalker. Now, it's basically a gas canister filled with green chalk. So if you've got a deep hole that your pencil can't reach, so for example, in a whisker box, because the screws go in around the edges, and with a pencil, you see, it just won't go in. But by using one of these funky little toys, you put it up against the wall and you just fire through the hole and it leaves you with a little green chalk mark perfect place for where you need to drill side pocket just elasticated just a few rolls of pvc tape and then nothing really that interesting going on in that pocket 
hard protected side pocket. In here I have the All Essential dust mask. I have my USB charger plug, my baby laser. This thing's fantastic, especially when your tape measure doesn't reach, or if you just need to measure a room or a space very quickly, you just, you just do it. And there's a few odds and sorts floating around from various jobs. As you can see, there's uh, some Ideal and some Wago connectors. As you can see, this one's got paint on it. That's uh, left over from first fix from a job, but perfectly reusable, so that'll get used again on another first fix job, or if I need to do some testing. In the main bag compartment. Now, one of my favorite toys is the Bosch electric screwdriver. Now, this thing is fantastic. It's rechargeable, forward, backwards control. Um, you may have seen a short I did on it recently where I demonstrated it because you just have to push, put some weight on the front and it will do up or undo and it's torqued so you know which setting to go to so you don't over tighten your screws. Really, really good for first or second fix on lot, when you're doing lots and lots of sockets, saves your wrists no end. My insulated screwdriver kit. Every electrician shouldn't go without a set of insulated screwdrivers, whether they're Vera or a different brand, it doesn't matter. These ones are great because they're interchangeable blades. You literally just pop out and just clip into the handle. Now, one thing I really do love about this is because they're interchangeable, it means I haven't got my pocket loaded up with loads and loads of big handles sticking out the side. And it also means that if I were to break one of these tips, and I have done a couple of times, I can just go and order a new one. And I just have to replace that shaft. I don't have to replace the entire thing. This kit is also what they call the turbo kit. As I turn the handle once, it would turn the shaft four times. So if I just take a flat head out and make it quite obvious on that and get rid of the tool bag. To see for every turn I do on the handle, the shaft turns four times. Really, really good piece of kit. Again, really good for doing fast screw ups or unscrews of accessories. Um, but to be honest, because since I got the Bosch, I tend not to use this too much, unless I've got to be really sensitive with the equipment. But obviously this is rated just 38, so it is insulated, whereas that is not. Also comes in a nice pouch, so it just keeps it all together nice and tidy. When I got the Bosch screwdriver, I also got my stud finder. Now this is basically a metal detector and it will help me find through walls, um, electrical cables, nails, stud work, etc. Really, really good. Just as I demonstrate here, you'll see that where that electric cable is, it will warn me exactly where it is. See, all lighting up. I've got the sound turned off on it at the moment. But I can turn the audio on and as you can see, Really, really useful piece of kit. Um, very useful for finding stud work as well, especially if you're doing down lights in the ceiling, for example, we need to put a light up. Now, these are items I've had in my last tool kit. I have my little mini level, which is magnetic. Really useful. I love that level. That level. Just my bog standard, short level. Always, always need levels in this uh, as an electrician. Uh, my box marker, we have both double and singles uh, for dry lining boxes, metal back boxes. Again, it's got a level on there in level bubble in the top. So you can just make sure you get everything straight level. And there's a perfect size, uh, perfect size. You, there are different versions of these kicking around, but yeah, great, comes out on a very, very regular basis. I have an electrician's hammer. Now, it's insulated handle, but it's not actually rated as GS38. But it's light and it's small, and, it, and you see it's got a nice 
flat head on the top. It's not like a claw hammer, which I have here. So you can see the comparison on the head. Now this hammer is designed so that if you're removing cable clips, you can get them in really, really easily in the back of the head. And obviously if you did that with a claw hammer and you had a wall, you can see to get the angle, you can see where the handle differs. So if we come over to the wall just over here, if I just take this clip up here, you can see that when I put my hammer in, see that's nice and flat and the handle comes out towards you. Whereas if I did the, and if you were, for example, up against the wall, that wall could be here. That means you can get that, get your hammer in and you can release the clip. Whereas if you had the claw hammer, I mean, I know this is just a stumpy one, but you can see straight away, if there was a wall where this cable is, I'd, I'd never get that in there. Never in a million years. But also with this hammer, it's got a nice, lovely, lovely flat head on there as well. So again, if I'm banging in clips, which are in the corner or near skirting boards, because that's a flat head, it gives me a larger surface area to hit the nail to get it into position. The Joker Spanner. I love this tool. Now, I used to carry adjustable ratchets and around with me all the time, adjustable spanners around with me all the time. This one is exactly the same thing, except it's spring-loaded. And what's really clever about this is that if I just take this box in the true Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier, you literally following, following the arrow that's on the side of the joker, just put it on there and it will just tighten up and because it's got these little cutouts on the corner there, it will catch onto the corner edges of the nut. And again, it will tighten it up. Of course, doing it on camera doesn't always go to plan, does it? But you see the mechanism on the handle there? As I move it, the handle goes back. So I don't actually physically have to take this off, move it, put it back on, turn it, take it off, put it back on again. Really, really excellent piece of equipment. As you can see with a comparison with a adjustable, which I got here. And apart from anything else, you can see the head just gets in the way with the, with the nut on the other side from the armored cable gland. In conjunction with that, I bought myself a little pipe wrench. This Nipex one, fully fully adjustable. You just push in the pin, and you can just open it up to whichever size you wish to have. You've got millimeters on one side and inches on the other. And also, you'll notice that as I open up the handle, the jaws open and close. Excellent, excellent piece of kit. And I use it in conjunction with the Joker Spanner a lot. So if I just open this to the right setting, you see what I love to do is because with a, with a normal old fashioned adjustable, you just can't, can't get in there very easily. The, the heads are just too big, they're too clumpy. And another thing with adjustables is, is that they move and they'll either go too tight or too loose and you're constantly having to adjust them. Whereas with these, you can just put them on, if I get the size right. You can just put them on, grab it tight, and off you go. You said absolutely no movement in there at all. And because of the shape of the head, because it's nice and small there as well, I don't think that's too big on that one. Always happens on camera, doesn't it? I can get that in there a lot, a lot, lot closer than I would do with the adjustable. Always need a wrecking bar. Floorboards, this is my best friend for getting those floorboards up out of the way. 
my other wrecking bar. Although this one's a bit more user-friendly in a way. Um, it's got a nice tighter head, the much sharper tips going in on the end there so you can get different angles on it. It's got a nice big hammer hitting point on the back if I need to really get it in somewhere. And this piece here is for, if I'm doing chipboard flooring, for example, um, with the new builds, a lot of it's all integrated chipboard glued together. If I need to get that up, then this hole here, you put it over the edge of the, over the top of the nail, smack it down, lift it back out again, and then leaves, leaves a nice hole for you to get underneath there and hoik that nail up without ripping the chipboard to pieces. Trusty tape measure, we all know what that was for. Every, every electrician, every tradesperson should have one of those. Pad saw, cutting plasterboard. Uh, usually for doing back boxes, I just what I use it for, um, dry lining. My bodget and scarper screwdriver, as you can see by the end of that, it's quite rounded off, it's quite soft, but that's because it gets used quite a lot as a chisel driver. Probably one of the oldest screwdrivers I own, um, and it looks it. it. It really is my abuse it and use it screwdriver. This is my magnetic multi-screwdriver in the back here. The bits fall out if I'm not careful. Multiple bits in the back, they all come out and they can go into the front right there and it just magnetizes the, the tip. Uh, I find this really, really useful for when I do light fittings. If I've got something like a chandelier um, that the client has asked me to pick up, uh, put to fix up to the ceiling. They normally have these tiny little grub screws, which are really, really fiddly, and you're trying to hold the lamp in place as you're trying to screw in the side. The fact that this is magnetic makes that job that so much easier to do. My deburring screwdriver. This is a 3.5, or M3.5, should I say. Now, if you've got metal back boxes or any kind of back boxes and you take the socket off or your light switch off, sometimes there'll be some rubbish in there or sometimes the box will be old so it'll fail very slightly or burr up. This little tool, I can screw it back into that hole, remake the thread so the screw goes back in again. Very, very useful little tool. Also very, very good when your plaster comes around and you feel the box is full of, a, full of muck and you've got to go through and clean up everything out before you can put your screws in. General purpose pipe cutter. Um, this has definitely seen some work some, and it's showing its age now. Used to use this for chopping um, armored cable until I bought this one, the armor slice. If you check out the video up here, you'll see what these are all about. So I did a really good, really good thing on that earlier in the year. Um, but I tend to just use this one for conduit now. Um, so, but yeah, really handy tools. And now I have my crimping tools. These ones, my automatic crimpers don't use them so much these days especially now i've moved over to the likes of wagos and the ideal fast connectors that we saw earlier um, but this crimping tool is for ferrules and it's recommended now in regulations that when you have flexible cable that you always put a ferrule on the end to stop any frays and it also gives a much better connection when you screw down onto it and last but not least I have my very important torque driver. Now with MCBs, RCBOs, basically anything to do in a consumer unit, um, you need to make sure that you don't under or over tighten the terminals because it can lead to damage of the cables. Um, it can also lead to fires, uh, loose connections, etc. But this, this is a fantastic tool. It fits the same blades as the main screwdriver kit. So I use the same blades coming out of here. And you can see down here is Newton meters. And I can very easily adjust 
the Newton meter torque to what I need it to be and it will go clunk when I hit the right torque setting. Really, really useful tool and also it's got a plastic cap on there so I can just spin it to start with when it's nice and loose until you get to the point where you tighten things up. This is pretty much every central tool I carry on the job. All I'm missing is my coffee mug. I'll leave a list in the description box below so if there's anything you fancy, you can go and check it out. Is there anything I've missed that you can think of that I could make use of? Then please drop me a comment below and please don't forget to like and subscribe because this really helps out the channel. So until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much for watching, and if there's... Uh, yeah. uh, it's not scrolling fast enough, and then it stops in the wrong place. No, I don't want Google. The, uh, the ratio uh, to what strength I need to go, what I need to go, what I needed to go to. You can check it out. And if, you, and if there's anything... Uh, uh, fear, 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 fear.